Nebraska farmers battle the weather, and a raid shows the impact of immigration on agriculture. Coming up on Grow, we look at the issue of guest workers and why farm groups want immigration reform. Plus, soybean growers battle weeds and the markets, and farmers assess hail damage. It's time to grow. We begin tonight with a look at the immigration raids and the impact on agriculture. ICE raided an O'Neill tomato greenhouse, hog farms, a grain company, feedlot, and ranch. Those who work with immigrant populations say the impact of immigrant labor on Nebraska agriculture is tremendous. Gerardo Pena was there as the immigration raids took place in O'Neill. Here's his firsthand account. In the first trip and around 8, uh, 28, 25 this morning, there were a whole bunch of cars passing on the, on the, on the, on the road, and I said, well, what, what's happening? And then I started seeing like uh, white vans, they're coming where I am. They just stop where I am and says a, a cop stop. So and he tell me to get off where I was in the forklift and, and sit down and says, I can sit down because my knees were, uh, hurt. Okay, just stay there, but don't run because we're ice and we're gonna come and check uh, uh, the people here. And says, well, I'm a citizen from the, the United States. Okay, I'm not asking you if you're a citizen or not. We're looking for somebody else. Nebraska U.S. Senator Deb Fisher sent a statement on the raids to NTV saying, quote, our nation's laws need to be enforced in a uniform and respectful way. But with Nebraska's unemployment below 3%, our egg producers and small businesses need workers. We should be focusing on border security and simplifying guest worker programs to help small businesses hire the staff they need, end quote. Cattlemen, pork producers, and American Farm Bureau all support immigration reform with some nuance. Farm Bureau says where American workers are unwilling or unavailable, workers from other countries are critical. Farm Bureau supports a new guest worker program. According to a study from Iowa State, the pork industry in particular faces a rural labor shortage due to an aging native-born workforce and falling birth rates. Making access to foreign-born workers a critical matter, pork producers say they support visa programs and say undocumented workers should have a path towards continuing working. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association says egg businesses want to hire only documented immigrants but often lack the ability to check. When it comes to immigration and agriculture, we want to know what you think. Do you support immigration reform efforts that make it easier to hire guest workers from other countries? Yes, no, or undecided? Follow Grow on Twitter to cast your vote in our weekly poll question. Now to the week's big story on the farm as some growers see crops hailed out. Nebraska Extension is holding meetings for growers who were hit by the hail in Merrick, Hamilton, York, and Seward counties. Monday, there will be meetings in both Utica and Central City. Extension folks will be talking about considerations growers may have as they try to move forward. We talked to a couple of growers who had bean fields they say looked as good as ever, but were wiped out. And USDA numbers back up just how good those crops had been looking. Corn continues to improve from good to excellent on the USDA Crop Progress Report. Two months ago, 9% of corn was in excellent condition. Now it's 29%. Soybeans have been on a similar trajectory. Challenges mount for Nebraska soybean growers. Not only the hail we talked about, but those tariffs. But it's not all doom and gloom. Here's more from Soybean Management Field Day in Kennesaw. So feel free to look at those. Those are all border plots there. We're dealing with a lot of things right now and things that really aren't going to go away anytime soon. Weeds, hail, insects, soybean farmers face pressure growing a crop, but marketing it may be an even bigger concern as tariffs hit an already struggling farm economy. This year, hopefully we'll be sitting pretty good. You know, it's the next year and the year after, you know, if we don't get a trade deal done, then people are going to get really concerned and it's going to hurt a lot of people. Economists say there's a traditional summer price drop-off, and trade isn't the only reason markets are slumping. We can't account everything that's happening in that market downturn to tariffs. Jessica Grosskopf says China will likely import more soybeans from Brazil, 
but that could open new markets for the U.S. But we also know that the rest of the world is out there for us to export to. So there's some opportunities for us and, and China isn't our only trade partner, even though they are a large trade partner at this time. I talked to AGP and Hastings, their, their business is actually ramping up shipping soy meal to Southeast Asia. So, you know, China maybe turned, our, turned their focus away, but everybody else turned their focus to the United States. Grosskopf says the key for farmers is to protect themselves, whether that's good crop insurance or contracts that guarantee a minimum price. And while farmers like to brag about big yields, the cost to produce a crop matters more. We joke that bushels don't pay bills. Obviously, you got to have bushels to sell the crop, but you got to get it sold. Farmers say it's taking longer than they'd like to sort it out, but it's out of their hands. You know, everybody's telling us to be patient. I know it's hard to be patient, but there's <laughs> nothing we can do about it right now. And Nebraska farmers may be off to a record-setting pace in 2018. Corn yields may average around 200 bushels an acre with strong numbers on soybeans as well. Based on conditions at the start of August, the USDA now forecasts corn production will reach 1.83 billion bushels, up 9% from a year ago. USDA says the total acres of corn harvested in Nebraska will be up about 1% from last year, and the average yield on corn, 196 bushels an acre, up 15 bushels from last year. Both yield and production are new record highs if realized. Soybean production is forecast in Nebraska, 332 million bushels, up 2% for last year, and also a new record high if realized. The area of beans harvested, down a little bit from last year, but the yield is forecasted at 61 bushels an acre, up four bushels from last year. And if that comes true, that would be another record high. Nebraska Extension wants to make sure those on the front lines of Nebraska agriculture have a plan. Experts say roughly half of Nebraska producers do not have a plan in place for how operations will be managed for years to come. And as the average age of farmers and ranchers rises, it's important to have that plan to pass on the farm Extension has developed a number of resources to help families through the decision-making process. One issue Extension folks have seen is when two families try to live off an operation that's only big enough to support one family. Egg professionals say you need about 12 to 1,500 acres of row crops to support one family. Fewer if there's also livestock involved, but you need around 3,000 acres, they say, to support two families. An Axtell Grain Company learns its fate from the Public Service Commission. The Nebraska PSC hit Robert Seed with a $10,000 fine for operating as a grain dealer without a permit. That follows a June hearing where the company admitted to doing it and apologized as well. On top of the fine, Roberts cannot engage in any grain dealer activities without first getting a grain dealer license. Farmers say it's a weapon in the war against weeds. We'll have more on dicamba, its volatility, but also its uses on the farm. And later, where the congressional candidates stand on trade.